my dear student and learner welcome to color pharma today we are going to discuss about a solvent effect on a wavelength maxima let us start to do the discussion about that so this topic is given in our syllabus that is the determination of absorption maxima and effect of solvent on absorption maxima of a organic compound procedure so if we bifurcate it this is one experiment this is one experiment and this one is a second experiment so today we are more focused about effect of solvents on organic compound that will already include the absorption maxima determinations so let us go ahead the aim of today's experiment is effect of solvent upon the absorption spectrum of phenol so what should be required the requirement is chemical we required is phenol water and cyclohexane phenol is our organic compound water is our polar organic solvent because we require a different types of solvent this is our non polar organic solvent so this two type of organic solvent we have taken it now we will check what is the effect then glassware we required a 100 ml volumetric flask 1 ml the pad next the cam instrument uv visible spectrophotometer is compulsory required then sonic heater then weight balance is required for the requirement to do this experiment let us see here the procedure is first the first procedure is we required to prepare a 0.02 percentage weight by volume solution of phenol in a water this is the first procedure of phenol preparation in organic polar solvent so how can we prepare so 0.02 weight by volume of phenol in 100 ml water so there is what is this this is 0.02 gram of phenol in a 100 ml water that will give you the 0.02 percentage what you have to do here you have to take a 100 ml volumetric flask required to weight this uh, 0.02 gram add 0.02 Zero, sorry, zero point zero zero two gram of phenol in hundred ml volumetric flask. Add sufficient water to make up to hundred ml. Complete it. Okay, this is one of the procedure. The second procedure is if you want to follow this, this you can follow this one also. So here you have to take a two hundred milligram of uh, phenol. that phenol is transfer into a 100 ml volumetric flask okay then add uh, about a 20 ml water sonicate for 10 minutes after sonications whatever the solutions you are getting a second step is you require to 1 ml of above solution into a 100 ml volumetric flask then make 100 ml volumetric flask transfer into 100 ml volumetric flask and make up the volume with water so make it with this uh, water so here also we are getting a 20 ppm here also you are getting a 20 ppm so whichever procedure you are getting a feasible that you can take it most probably this procedure is given in the book but this is useful for the qualitative analysis this is for a qualitative analysis this procedure is for a quantitative analysis why because if you see here 0.002 g it means it is about a 2 mg to weigh on a 2 mg is very tough or difficult so i have taken the i have given another procedure it give the same amount or concentration of the phenol 
So this procedure we have done in the water, the similar procedure we take and follow in a cyclohexane. So again here also this is in gram. The same procedure you have to follow, you have to take a, a 100 ml volumetric flask, add about a 0 0.002 gram of phenol, add some amount of sufficient water to make a 100 ml sonicate and try to dissolve it. If it is possible, try to complete dissolve. If it is not dissolved, then we have not an issue because this is a qualitative test. Another procedure, the similar way we can take, instead of water, we have to take a cyclohexane. Cyclohexane is taken here because it is a non-polar solvent. Now you have two, now you have two volumetric flasks. One volumetric flask contains phenol in water, another volumetric flask which containing a cyclohexane. After this water and a cyclohexane, then you have to move in UV and take a scan of the UV. This is filled with the water. This is containing phenol. The similar way we can take also this one. This is filled with the cyclohexane. So both you move to the UV laboratory and take or scan. Here you require a scan mode, not a photometric mode. So in case of scan mode. You can get a uh, spectra identified a uh, wavelength maxima and whatever the wavelength maxima you are getting that you write down in this result in this form. The first is uh, name of the solvent that is cyclohexane, another that is water, this is non-polar, this is polar, whatever your result you can write here, whatever you are getting the result that you write here, the unit of lambda max is a nanometer. Okay. So after getting this result, what should you have to do the conclusion? So conclusion is that wavelength maxima of phenol in organic polar solvent was, if it is higher, then you can strike out this. If it is lower, then do like that also. Then the organic non-polar solvent that is cyclohexane, it show. If it show the red shift, then it is okay. If it show blue shift, then you can do a vice versa in a organic solvent. So this is the conclusion we are getting. Now, how this practically or theoretically we can conclude it. So if you see here, in case of uh, in case of any organic compound, there are th that much transition is possible. Sigma to sigma star, then sigma uh, pi to pi star, n to pi star. So among this all, if you see, sorry, in sigma to sigma star, there is no much more organic effect. It, transition is there, but we are more focused today on a electronic transition which is influenced by the solvent. So what happened here? We are more focused to n to a uh, pi to pi star and n to pi star. So if you see the pi to pi star transition here is shown that n to pi star transition is also shown as here. So they have indicated that. This is organic non-polar solvent. This is organic non-polar solvent. Here they discuss about to pi to pi star transitions. Here they are discussing about to n to pi star transitions. So that I will show you again. But basically diagram is like that. So on this UV you are also getting uh, 220 to 400. That is if your lambda max moves in this direction that is known as a blue shift. Because if you see start from Vib gear. It is start from wave gear. So red on this side and violet or indigo or blue on this side. So if the lambda max moves in this directions, then it is known as a red shift. I show you how it's occur. So basically this is known as a solvatochromism. If you see here, the polarity of electron is based on n, the highest polar is n, then pi star and then pi. Because of polarity of electronic transitions, they are gives the effect on the solvent. Let us see here two parts we have divided. One is hypsochromic shift that is blue shift. So basically if you take n to pi star transition, suppose this is our pi star. This is n. That is show that here also. This is in a non-polar 
solvent okay the same compound will take in a polar solvent what happen i show in the last n is more polar than pi star than pi so what happen n are making a conjugations or bonding with this uh, with uh, uh, with solvent so what happen a new transition would be like this this is pi star it's a little bit little bit it it not i i, I draw it here also it is not good one minute okay it is little bit more like this this is pi star but n is more more this is n so what happened now transition like this one in a polar organic solvent so that increase energy compared to this one this is the delta e1 and this is delta e2 if you see the delta e2 is higher in n to pi star is due to increase solvation of the unbonded electron pair still n is a lone pair of electron so where it is present basically it is present on oh it is present on nh2 if functional group like this then such type of shifting can be observed so what happened that case increase energy if you see here that is an increase energy if increase energy energy and wavelength are inversely proportional so decrease a wavelength it should decrease a wavelength so what happened it shows the decrease wavelength and in the last i shows that i i i explain that decrease wavelength it means it is a blue shift it is a blue shift in last slide i have shown you the similar way we are also going to discuss about uh, bathochromic shift that is red shift what happened here this is basically happen in case of pi to pi star transition if you see this is pi this is pi star among this all if you see here this is a uh, this is normal transition normal transitions means it is in non polar but when we take the polar solvent what happen this is come little bit down this is this does not show major difference so what happen the decrease energy decrease energy compared to what compared to this one so this is if we take delta e x and this is delta e y then what happen delta v decrease so that increase a uh, wavelength that increase wavelength means it show a rad shift it show the rad shift i explain the same thing here i explain the same thing here if you see is due to reduction in energy level of excited uh, pi electron this is excited pi electron so decrease in energy decrease in energy it shows the increase wavelength that increase wavelength it shows that it gives the bathochromic shift so bathochromic shift is basically observed in a pi to pi star transitions okay so let us go ahead at the study question are here so write down at least each five polar protic polar aprotic non polar organic solvent with iupac name second question draw at least two chemical structure each of uv active and uv inactive substance draw at least five organic structure have conjugation with resonance structure write down different electronic transitions of phenol comment is wavelength maxima depend on the concentration of the substance this five study question you have to write uh, by yourself for the study learn uh, for the learning purpose this is my attempt to explain you a basic experiment of the solvent effect if you like then share to among your friends also and uh, subscribe this channel so we can make more video about that thank you thanks a lot